Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, the latest addition to Capcom's Vs. series, or as TV Tropes labels it, the Capcom vs. Whatever series. I've always been a fan of fighting games, and the Vs. series is certainly no exception. Now, before we go into the game, I figured it'd be nice to go back into my childhood and look at the beginning of the Capcom vs. series. The year is 1997. Arcades were beginning to die out, but fighting games remained still strong in the market. Down the street from my house was a takeout restaurant owned by my uncle, which housed two arcade cabinets, Cruisin' USA and X-Men vs. Street Fighter. The combination struck me as odd, but my 10-year-old mind was mesmerized by the flashy combos, slick 2D graphics, and the fact that the X-Men were facing off the characters from Street Fighter. Whoever thought that would happen? I always thought if two franchises were good to meet, it would be Street Fighter vs. Mortal Kombat. But anyway, all it took was one round and I was forever hooked. I cannot begin to tell you how many hours and quarters I spent on this game. It was incredible for its time, and I was supremely pissed off when the restaurant was closed down, taking the arcade cabinet with it. It became one of those arcade games that every time I saw it, I stopped whatever I was doing just to play around. Eventually, a sequel to the game would be released titled Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. It was, more or less, the same game, just with additional characters. This particular game would be the one I played the least. I mean, it was incredibly rare that I run into the arcade cabinet of the game. Later down the road, Capcom would release another sequel labeled Marvel vs. Capcom, which is kind of weird because that's what the last two games were anyway, but in terms of gameplay, they all played pretty much the same, with only slight tweaks in the systems here and there. However, in the year 2000, insert year 2000 joke here, came the game which will become one of my favorite games of all time, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Look at all these characters. But sadly, Capcom would lose the Marvel license in 2005 and it wasn't going to be another Capcom vs. game for some time. Now, there were other Capcom crossover games like Capcom vs. SNK or that incredibly obscure Namco Cross Capcom, but none of these games came close to being as fun or exciting as these titles. That's not to say they're bad. No, they're great games. I just like the Marvel vs. Capcom style more. In 2008, Capcom decided to give the Versus series another shot, this time teaming up with the animation studio Tatsunoko, who were known for creating such shows as Science Ninja Team Gatchaman, Man, which English-speaking audiences would know as Battle of the Planets and their adaptation G-Force Guardian of Space. Now personally, I never really watched a whole lot of Gatchaman. Man. I vaguely remember Cartoon Network airing the show a long time ago, but I was so young back then that I didn't clearly get what the show was about, and I'm not about to go into that. But anyway, to the Japanese audiences, it would pit one of their most beloved anime studios going against the legendary Capcom fighters. Unfortunately, when it was first released, it was a Japan-only title. But of course, that didn't stop people, including me, from finding ways to play the Japanese release. Hell, one of the few remaining arcades I know went as far as to actually import a Japanese arcade cabinet of the game, which is where I first played it. Eventually, fan response became so large that Capcom decided to release the game everywhere else, with more characters and online play. Except for this dude, who probably due to licensing issues got the axe. Tatsunoko vs. Capcom continues with the Marvel vs. Capcom fighting structure and simplifies it to the point where just about anybody, and I mean anybody, can pick it up and play it. Instead of having your usual punch buttons and kick buttons, you now just have three attack buttons and an assist button. Your attacks differ depending on how you chain them together, so experimenting is absolute key in order to pull off large combos. Instead of 3 on 3 fights like its predecessor, the game goes back to the classic 2 on 2 bouts. The simplified control scheme also makes it a hell of a lot easier to pull off special moves and make it look like you know what you're doing. You can use the Wii Mode setup, the Classic Controller, or the GameCube Controller. I recommend the Classic Controller, or the Classic Controller Pro if you have it. It definitely feels the most natural to me. In terms of characters, Tatsunoko vs. Capcom brings plenty. Not as much as Marvel vs. Capcom 2, but still quite a bunch. On the Capcom side, we have Ryu, Chun-Li, and Alex from the Street Fighter series, Morrigan from the Darkstalker series, Batu from Rival Schools, who I'm glad was not completely forgotten, Mega Man Volnut from the Mega Man Legends series, Soki from Animusha Dawn of Dreams, God, why didn't they choose Samonosuke instead? We also have Roll from the original Mega Man series, Saki from a game I never heard of, Beautiful Joe, Frank West who's covered wars, Zero from Mega Man X, and finally the PTX 4-0-A from Lost Planet. Alright. The Tatsunoku side, predictably, is far more unknown to me, but I recognize some of these faces, and I apologize if I butcher any names here. We got Ken the Eagle, June the Swan, Kashan, Tekaman, Polymar, Yatterman No. 1, Karis, Ipatsuman, Tekaman Blade, Joe the Condor, Yatterman 2, and finally Gold Refrigerator. The sheer variety is definitely on the strong side in this game. In terms of single player, Tatsunoko vs. Capcom offers the usual swig. You have your standard arcade mode, time attack mode, survival mode, and training mode. If you're like me, you'll probably spend most of your time in training mode, learning how to chain combos properly. When playing modes like arcade mode, you're awarded Zenny, which you can spend in the game shop. This can range from different character colors, illustrations, and cinematics. Speaking of which, didn't the Japanese version have animated endings for each character? Why did those get the axe in this version? When Tatsunoko vs. Capcom was first released in Japan, its subtitle was Cross Generation of Heroes. But when it was decided to be brought overseas, it got quite a number of gameplay tweaks in addition to new characters, but also got rid of the animated endings. This updated version is what we now know as Ultimate All-Stars. I'm pretty sure you can still find the animated ending somewhere on YouTube, so take a look if you're curious. 
Graphically speaking, if you're a cell shaded 3 d nothing, you're absolutely going to love how this game looks. The bright colors, flashy moves, and smooth character models are absolute eye candy, and to me personally contends with Street Fighter 4 in terms of style. Now, I'm more of a fan of HD 2D sprites, but there's no way I can say this is not beautiful to look at. Now, in terms of hiccups, I can only think of a few, and even then, they're pretty minor. First, the online setup is absolute shit. Instead of creating a lobby and being able to choose who you can fight, the game automatically pairs you up with some random person no matter how good or bad the signal may be. I'm sorry, but when I'm playing online, I want to make sure I'm playing with someone I know has a good signal and therefore have the least amount of lag as possible. If there's one thing I hate, especially in a fighting game, it's lag. Finally, after unlocking all the characters, you come to realize just how bare-bones single player is. But I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who says that, so I won't risk beating a dead horse. If you're looking for one of the best fighting games on the Nintendo Wii, then look no further than Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. It's definitely one of the system's best titles and should not be missed by anyone who likes a little competition. If you ever want to go around or two with me, you can find my friend code in the description box. My favorite combination so far is Morrigan and Yatterman number one. I look forward to kicking your ass. Unless you use zero. In which case, I'll use zero. Zero. I'll give it a 9.0 out of 10. Oh, yeah.